Welcome to another edition of the USF Football Radio Show. We start a bright new season, and it's a special one. The 25th season of USF football begins with a road game at North Carolina State on Thursday night. As always, head coach Jeff Scott joins us. Coach, we sat here a year ago, and you had had one spring practice. You'd had a, a convoluted fall schedule. I got the feeling as as hard as your staff worked, you didn't know really what you had on this team. Now we sit here in 2021, you've had a spring game, you've had the full run of spring and fall practices. It's got to be a great feeling just to have that that feel of normality coming into this year. No question about it. I think uh, just the the fact of uh, you know being able to have a spring practice and just how valuable that is, and then also the summer training. Uh, this past summer uh, was definitely uh, back to normal. It, where maybe a year ago we were having to work out and lift outside and, and do all those type of things. So uh, there's no doubt about it. It's been great to kind of get back to a, a normal routine, and uh, you know really proud of the way the guys have worked these uh, last eight months, and looking forward to to watching them play this week. Coach, now you're going into year two, but you're still experiencing some things for the first time as a head coach here at the University of South Florida. One of the many things that you did first and probably one of the only times you'll do it while you're here is unveil a locker room. How was it to see the joy on your guys' faces after you and some of your support staff worked so diligently to get this done during this off season? Yeah, it was great. It was an awesome way to start fall camp, right? And, uh, you know, one thing that – uh, we talk about is, hey, it's a new day, right? This is a new year, and, and life is full of new beginnings. And, you know, another thing that we talked about, you know, since I got here was, hey, best is the standard and really my expectations for our players uh, to, to give their best effort uh, in everything that they do in the classroom, out in the community, in the weight room, on the practice field, on the game field. And, and then the same thing, we're going we're gonna to try to give them the very best that we can. And I think, uh, you know, I'm really uh, appreciative to all of our donors. There's a lot of – uh, donors that were involved making that happen and our administration Michael Kelly and, and his his team you know there's a lot of people that uh, put in work to, to get that done on a, a very quick uh, timeline and uh, it was awesome it was really just a you know incredible uh, way to start the uh, you know, fall camp and, and really this new year and and uh, you know big message to our guys is hey you know we're healed, here to build and uh, you know it's, it's their opportunity now to kind of build on the foundation uh, that, you know, our program's had the last 25 years. And you need a bigger locker room because you have more players. Last year we'd go out to practice and we'd see 65, 70 guys running around and it was kind of jarring. I mean, that's what really brought a lot of last year home when you when you saw that out on the practice field. Numbers are a lot different this year. Yeah, I'm really uh, encouraged. Uh, you know, I counted it up at the beginning of the week. We had 110 players out there practicing. And just like you said last year, we, we were down in the, the low 70s sometimes. And, you know, just being able to uh, practice against uh, scout teams, you know, being able to get a good look uh, from the other side and not have to take part of practice time, to, you know, for the varsity to give each other looks, you know, that stuff adds up. And, uh, you know, it's the details of what we're doing and the calls and, and, uh, you know, the game plan. And so, again, it kind of goes back to trying to get to a, a more normal situation. And it's definitely uh, been great to have that many players here and working hard. And, and hopefully that will add to the depth that we'll need throughout the year. Everybody in the game of college football is experiencing something new as it relates to COVID. There are new variants. But at the same time, you guys have learned how to deal with COVID a lot more effectively. What are some of the things that you and your staff employed the, this, this past offseason to make sure that when it's time for game day, you guys got as many as your key core guys as you should have with you? Yeah, well, the big thing is that, you know, COVID has not gone away, right? And, and I think, uh, you know, for all of us, we were hoping that we wouldn't even be talking about COVID this year. But uh, obviously with the new Delta variant, uh, you know, we've, we have to continue to be diligent. I think the first thing, uh, you know, I've said this many times, we're very fortunate to have USF Health in our backyard and just access to so many uh, doctors and, and people that have great information. Um, so whenever we're talking to our players about getting the vaccine and these type of things, uh, we, we, we really were able to, to get some uh, people over that had uh, great expertise in that area. Uh, so that was the first piece. And then, you know, the second piece is just being diligent in everything we do in our meetings and in the locker room, you know, and then uh, whenever we're in the weight room, 
just being sure that we're doing everything possible to, to keep our guys as safe as possible. And then also uh, to be able to have everybody so we can be full speed uh, when we get ready to kick it off. You have built an intriguing team. You have some veterans. You have some super seniors coming back. You have some transfers coming in, and you have a strong recruiting class. Tell us a little bit about the makeup of this 2021 USF team. What's their personality like? Yeah, I've been really uh, pleased with this group, really, ever since we got here in January. And, uh, again, whenever we brought in uh, – uh, several key transfers I was kind of interested to see how they would kind of mix with our team and and uh, I was really pleased uh, to see that our our players our returning players really accepted the transfers really accepted the new freshmen that were coming in and uh, really to see that te team chemistry start to develop as early as you know February March going into spring practice and uh, you know I think this team right here it's it's important to them uh, obviously uh, everybody's disappointed with uh, the lack of success that we had last year and lack of consistency. And so this group right here has been very focused, uh, you know, and really has come out each and every day and everything we've asked them to do, uh, given great effort. And, uh, you know, I said last year uh, I felt like I was kind of managing some situations and managing a, a team, you know, that I just walked into. And, and now this year, uh, really since January, we've been able to coach and really been able to get to the, the next level uh, in their development uh, and everything that they do uh, on the field and off the field. You know, along with taking this team and kind of forming it into a team that you were kind of just managing, but now it's a team that belongs to Jeff Scott. What have some of the challenges that you've been? You had some players depart. Obviously, you had a ton of new players come in. But what are some of the things that have challenged you and your staff the most? Yeah, you know, I think the uh, you know biggest thing for us is uh, just trying to to uh, develop some depth, right? And I think we have some key guys that came back. We got a few uh, guys that we brought in, but really, you know, it's it's a long season, and uh, we start off with a very challenging. Uh, non-conference schedule and so I think for us trying to, to get that freshman group and sophomore group to really take the next step I think that's really uh, important because we're going to need all those guys uh, as the season goes so I'd say that's probably uh, been one of the biggest focus points for us is not just the returning guys that have played uh, but trying to get some young guys you know from a depth standpoint and then the second thing is just becoming a smarter team and, and understanding uh, the game and all the different situations that come up. You know, there was uh, multiple situations last year that we didn't handle very well. And uh, so I think we've tried to do uh, a really good job this off season and, and fall camp of really educating our guys and talking through a lot of these situations that when they come up, it, it really, uh, you know, could be the difference in winning or losing the game. You made a couple of moves on your staff. Uh, the coordinators are intact, so there's a little bit of continuity there from year one. None of the guys that you brought in for your staff were strangers, though. They were guys that you had coached with or, or certainly been aware of in the past. Tell us a little bit about this 2021 staff and your comfort level with who you've got working with you. Yeah, I'm really uh, proud of our staff and um – you know, each year, like we said, it's a new year, right? you got new players coming and going, and sometimes you have coaches come and go. And, uh, you know, Bobby Bentley starting off on the offensive side, uh, coaching our wide receivers, being our passing game coordinator. I've known Coach Bentley for, shoot, over 20 years. And I actually worked for him uh, my first uh, year in college at Presbyterian College back in 2007. Uh, but he has a, a great expertise, uh, you know, in offense, passing game. He's done a really good job with our wide receivers uh, since he's been here. Cam Aiken our new running backs coach and run coordinator. Uh, I've known Cam for probably about the last 10 years, worked directly with him at Clemson uh, that entire time. And, uh, you know, he's just a great teacher. He understands the game. He understands the position and the, the protections and all the things that we need to, to teach our uh, running backs to be able to go out and execute in both the passing game uh, and the running game. And then, uh, obviously, uh, Coach Ernie Sims, our linebackers coach, was here as an analyst. And when he was able to move over uh, full time to uh, on the field to – to uh, coach our linebackers, he's done an outstanding job. Obviously, he had a great uh, career as a player there at Florida State and then also in the NFL. Um, so it's been fun uh, watching that group uh, get in. Again, just like we're talking about the chemistry, uh, you know, and then also uh, working with the, with our corners. You know, that was uh, an area where, you know, we, we have two corners uh, leaving, right, last year. And we, so we got some new guys. And, and George Barlow uh, has come in uh, previously. He's been at NC State in years past. And uh, he's done a really good job developing 
uh, those, those that next group of corners and uh, I think getting their confidence uh, where it needs to be and, and also their uh, technique and, and all the different assignments that they have. Coach, and, and I'd invite you more to continue to elaborate on what are some of the things that went into choosing these guys. A lot of times you go out and you hire coaches because you know, hey, we need better play at this position. But what about some of the character traits and some of the off-the-field things that contributed to your decision-making as you went out and brought these coaches along? Sure. Well, I've talked a lot about culture, right, just the importance of uh, developing a winning culture uh, that, that really is living and breathing uh, in your building and in your locker room. And, you know, one of the important pieces to that is the people because the people are the ones that, that make the culture. And it's not just players. It, it, it starts with the coaches. And, you know, I can't be everywhere. I can't be in every position meeting. And, and so it starts really as a head coach of uh, bringing in uh, coaches that believe in the same principles that you do and, and how we're going to um, – how we're going to run our program, how we're going to develop our young men and uh, the expectations that we have. Also, the, the family atmosphere, relationships that I want our coaches to have. So, you know, I think uh, coaches that know ball, knows X's and O's, those guys are a dime a dozen. But coaches that know ball that also are great men of integrity, men of character, that truly, you know, are there to serve their players' heart, not just their talent, and that's a smaller list. And that's the list that, that I always – uh, try to work off of any time we have an opportunity uh, to bring in new coaches. And I feel all these uh, guys that joined us, uh, along with also, I should also mention uh, A.J. Artis, our new strength coach. Uh, he's done a fantastic job, got here right before spring spring ball and uh, has really done a good job uh, with our players and he and his staff in the off season in both the weight room and then also uh, on the field during all their summer uh, skills and drills and conditioning segments. So I feel like uh, that, that group is really uh, – added uh, another layer uh, to the, the culture that we already have here in place. You were a position coach by necessity, working with the wide receivers. Was that hard to give that up? I mean, I know that's not sustainable, but I got the impression you were really enjoying that. Yeah, you know, whenever I actually took over coaching wide receivers for Coach Sweeney, when Coach Sweeney became the head coach, and, you know, he, he used to always say, man, that's one of the toughest things about being the head coach is you don't ever have, you don't have your segment anymore and getting on the field and, and coaching and, and just kind of the way that it worked out with, a, you know, Coach Bentley's situation. He needed a little bit more time until he could start full time in July. And uh, so it was an opportunity for me to get in there with those guys uh, this spring. It was a lot of fun. And, you know, I think, um, you know, hopefully I, I left him in good hands whenever I handed it over to, to Coach Bentley uh, whenever he started full time with us in July. But, yeah, that was that was a lot of fun. And I think, you know, as a head coach, uh, you know, you got to walk around and practice and, and watch each you know, position, each side of the ball, and all those type of things. So I'm trying to, to get used to that. But there's no doubt my my uh, foundation and, and backgrounds on offense with those wide receivers. So I, I probably pay a little bit more attention to those guys uh, each and every practice. Coach, you've also had the opportunity to get yourself, and not only yourself, but your team out into the community. What have been some of the highlights this off season, as far as getting back out into the community, getting around the community a little more, shaking hands, meeting a few more people? Yeah, I think the the first thing for me, it starts with our former players, right? And, and you know that, obviously, uh, being one of our USF football alumni. I think that was something, uh, whenever I, I, I got here, it was very important to, to get our, our former uh, alumni back around our players. I think, you know, we've got an incredible, uh, even though we've only had football here for 25 years, you know, there's a lot to learn. And, uh, you know, that's one thing I tell our players about all the time is, Yes, you need to learn from your own experiences, but a wise man learns from the experience of others. And uh, to have, have some players that have gone through this program and, uh, you know, been out there and, and sweat on the same practice fields and, and weight room and all these things, you know, just learning from them. So it's been fun getting them back. Uh, we've done several things uh, before the spring game. We were able to have a, a, a gathering. And then uh, during one of our, our, our last football scrimmages, actually had the football alumni out and, and went over and ha had lunch with them. But, you know, I think obviously due to the pandemic, we, we're having to be a little bit careful. Um, and, you know, that's something that as it continues to open up, uh, we'll be able to get our, our players out a, a little bit more. But, you know, the biggest thing is, is I want our players to understand, you know, that um, they're more than just football players, right? And we see the, the value that they have. And eventually their time here is, is going to come to an end. And so if they can use the time that they have here and maybe the platform that they have here to get out and make a difference. I know we'll be uh, doing some community service uh, during our open week uh, this fall, 
and uh, you know just again challenging the guys to to uh, you know find a way to make a difference right here in the local community um, you know while they have this opportunity uh, playing for the Bulls. All right, Coach, offensive coordinator Charlie Weiss coming up later in the show, quarterback Cade Fortin as well. More with Coach Scott when we come back after this on the USF Football Radio Show. Welcome back to the USF Football Radio Show. We are back in action Thursday night, Raleigh, North Carolina, with the Bulls against North Carolina State. And don't forget the big home opener, Raymond James Stadium, September 11th, as the Bulls host the Florida Gators. Coach, we'll have Cade Fortin join us later in the program, but I want to ask you about the quarterback situation. You had a good battle this year, and it seemed to play out just how you wanted it to in that you were able to announce a starter at about the time you had hoped for. Your point was you hoped when you made the announcement it was kind of evident, and that seemed to be the case this year. Yeah, you know, I think uh, the biggest thing that I'm looking for, you know, from last year to this year is progress, right? And I've seen a lot of progress in several of the positions. Probably the biggest amount of progress has been at the quarterback position, and that's obviously a a huge part of your team and your office's success. And, uh, you know, I feel like we've got, you know, three or four guys in that room uh, that, that could really uh, lead our team. Uh, but Cade, I would just say his consistency every day showing up and uh, doing things at a very high level. Uh, I'm just really proud because when he got here, you know, a year ago and, and uh, we didn't have spring practice, he's just trying to learn the offense in fall camp and, he had had to sit out a year the year before, uh, not really playing. So he was just rusty and a little bit slow in his reads and just wasn't quite where he needed to be. And uh, it, it's been awesome to watch him whenever he came back, you know, the following spring, uh, this past spring. He was just a different player, and it's because he put in the work. And then, again, in fall camp to, to see how consistent he's been. Uh, he's been very, um, you know, just a really good leader for us. He understands what he's doing. He knows where to go with the ball. He's been protecting the ball really well. And uh, so I think his consistency overall is what, what kind of got him over the hump. And then behind him, we have two, you know, talented young players. Uh, Timmy McLean is, is uh, very talented. He's dangerous with the ball in his hands. Uh, he's tough to tackle, but he also throws the ball very well. And he's a guy that, uh, you know, there's going to be opportunities for him probably at some point uh, because of his skill set and the things that he can do. And then Trey Marsh, a freshman we had last year, uh, he's got a really big arm. I think last year things just happened a little bit fast for him. Uh, I think through what I've seen in, in spring practice and summer and fall camp, things have slowed down for him a little bit. But, you know, he has an NFL arm, and uh, I think he's really made some progress. And so I think if those guys get called on, uh, you know, they'll be ready. Um, you know, so we're just really proud of, of Cade, his consistency. And, and like you said, what you want it when anytime you're having a quarterback competition, you want it to be – uh, obvious enough uh, because the the best one has really uh, done a great job, not because he's kind of the best of what you have. And uh, this has been one of those situations where all of those guys, along with Jaron Williams, transfer from Miami, you know, all those guys have, have had their, their moments throughout the spring and fall camp. But Cade's just been uh, the most consistent overall uh, throughout the last eight months. Coach, I was watching one of your interviews, and you said something very profound. You said you don't go around the country and find a successful team that doesn't have a said quarterback. Um, and I thought that was very key. One of the other things that we all know about football is you don't find successful teams that don't have leadership. Not leadership that's in the coach's locker room, but in the player's locker room. Can you speak to Gage's leadership and some other guys who make up what you call or so or quote unquote a leadership committee for your 2021 Bulls? Yeah, absolutely. I think as coaches, sometimes we, we want to name who the leaders are, but the reality, as you know, as a player, is the team kind of decides who the leaders are and how, how they step up. And, you know, we have a uh, leadership group called the Bull Council, and uh, it's 12 players that represent every position on the team. And uh, part of that was selected, you know, from each position from that from the players and then also with the coaches. And, and I meet with that group at least once or twice a week and uh, really have an opportunity, number one, to kind of listen to them, listen to them and get a uh, kind of a pulse of where our team is and, and things that we maybe need to focus on. And then also it gives me an opportunity to really kind of communicate the message and the vision to them that I need them to take into the locker room and take into their position rooms. And, uh, but you're exactly right. I think, you know, the, the best teams 
uh, take ownership inside the locker room, that the leaders take ownership of the team. And uh, as a coach, if you're the only one pushing and the only one driving, uh, then, then you're not going to have a, a successful team or a successful program. And so I think part of that development that we've talked about in the off season is also developing those leaders uh, through these meetings and different things that we're doing. Uh, but that's another area that I feel like we've really made a lot of progress uh, this year from a year ago is that leadership council. And Cade is on, on, in that group. And, uh, you know, Cade's done a really good job of, uh, you know, whenever he speaks up, everybody listens because he's earned that respect uh, because of the work ethic and the person that he is day in and day out. Defensively, you've got some new faces, especially in the secondary where you've got some talented transfers. But when I listen to Coach Spencer talk with the media this fall, he always comes back to run defense as, as where the Bulls need to improve and the key to being better overall defensively. Do you see it that way as well? Yeah, absolutely. I think, um, you know, we've definitely, uh, like you said, we're able to address some of the needs that we had on the back end uh, with Will Jones and Matt Hill and a few of those guys coming in there. But uh, ultimately, you know, we got to get better up front. And that's been a big challenge in the off season with our defensive line, our linebackers. And, you know, when you go back and watch the tape and study and try to f- figure out where the um, – you know, where, where the plays went wrong, the explosive plays and those type of things. Usually it happens when, when one person's not where they're supposed to be, right? And uh, I said it earlier today, you know, offensively you can have a, a player that runs the wrong route and the quarterback may throw it to the other side of the field as a touchdown and nobody knew it. Defensively, if the safety or, or linebacker or a defensive lineman, you know, choose the wrong gap, it could be a touchdown. And uh, so it really just having everybody on the same page, uh, I, I'm very uh, – you know, optimistic that with another year in our system, we got a lot of the, those players that are returning uh, uh, kind of from that front seven and, uh, you know, really looking for that group to be able to have uh, a lot of success and show a lot of progress this year in both the run game and then also uh, our pass defense. Coach, talk a little bit more about those guys that are playing at the second level for you and probably the three guys who've played the most football in your returning defense. That's Antonio Greer, Dwayne Boyles, and then Vincent Davis. How has how has their not only on the field playing ability grown, but off the field leadership's abilities, and how do you think it will be key to your success as a defensive unit this year? Yeah, those three guys are very key uh, to our defense. They're kind of the, the heartbeat of our defense, right? Right there in the middle uh, between the D line and the secondary. They they're the ones that that work with with uh, everybody, and communication I think is important. I think uh, last year, you know, we just we didn't have consistency uh, in positions whether it was due to COVID or injuries, it just seemed like we had a lot of different uh, lineups, very few times that, that we had those guys. And, and so far, those guys have been able to stay healthy. They've been able to get out there together. And uh, that's really probably the, the experience uh, that we have there on the defensive side of the ball. But really proud of uh, Boyles. Uh, you know, he's, he's one of those guys. He's on that, that Bull Council Leadership Committee that we talked about. I uh, really have seen him uh, take his game personally to the next level and him being uh, more vocal and communicating uh, with the defense and helping guys get lined up. And uh, Greer the same way. Uh, you know, he's uh, been healthy. Uh, last year he was kind of in and out uh, with some injuries and things like that. But to be able to see him healthy and consistent and be out there, uh, you know. And then Vincent Davis, he, he's probably one of the most physical players that we have on the team. Uh, he knows uh, only one speed, and that's full speed. Uh, sometimes we go out there and try to do a walk through or jog through and, uh, different, you know, parts of the uh, preparation, and all he knows how to do is, is go full speed, and and that's what you, you really you're looking for, and that's what you know you want to. That becomes contagious on your defense. So for us to to play well, we need those three guys to continue uh, to develop and build on the foundation that they already have here. My favorite USF football story of fall was not really a football story. Uh, it's not true at USF, but a lot of athletic departments, programs are kind of on an island, this coach doing this, that coach doing that, and there's not a lot of interaction. But at USF, it's a little different than that. But your involvement with women's soccer was really fascinating to, to see. It was a, a lot of fun. But it was more than that, too. It was support for women's athletics. It was support for a very successful program here at USF. Tell us a little bit about how that came about and how it all unfolded. It, it really just kind of happened naturally. It wasn't, uh, you know, something that was planned uh, very far in advance. 
Um, you know, some of our players came up to me a couple of weeks ago and telling me that our women's soccer uh, team was getting ready to play their first game, and we had some meetings in the evenings, and so we kind of moved our meeting times around so we could get out there, and, and it was awesome. Our, our football team, I mean, all the players, they were engaged and cheering and just had a great time, and, you know, that was another thing. Again, there was just so many things a year ago with COVID, and, you know, just kind of you felt like you were on a lot island a little bit, and so now this year I think it's really important. Uh, Michael Kelly has done a really good job of talking about Team USF, and really within the athletic department, our, our players and coaches supporting each other uh, during these times. And so after we did that, uh, you know, one of the uh, members on the women's soccer team came up to me and, and asked me about uh, maybe us doing a, a PK shootout with them. I thought that was awesome. And that was maybe the day before they were playing Florida. And I think I said, if they beat Florida, then we'll do it. And uh, sure enough, they beat Florida. So the next day we came out, uh, I, I think the women's soccer team they knew that we were getting ready to do it. None of our players knew. I, none of our coaches knew. I was the only one. So it just happened to be on, on a day where we were uh, had a little shorter practice. So we had a little extra time. So when practice was over, I called them up, told them what we were doing, and uh, they were fired up. But, you know, to me, I, I, that was just a, a great picture of, you know, what I think we uh, can, can really make us special here at USF and, you know, within our, our athletic department, within our sports teams, just everybody supporting each other. And then also I think another thing I'm really encouraged about is, is seeing our students back here on campus. And really, you know, I have a heart to, uh, you know, really see uh, our students and our, our uh, athletics teams and uh, student athletes really kind of become one as well and support each other. And so I think that was a great picture for that. And, you know, just really proud of uh, Coach Denise, our women's soccer team, and, and all of our other teams on their early success. And, uh, we're definitely pulling for them this fall and this year, and I know they'll be pulling for us. Coach, another one of the key things that happened this all season here recently, you had a very special visitor in Mrs. Selman. She also brought her son out. I don't know how special your guys really understood that moment to be, but how special was it for you, and what did you learn after having her come in and visit your team? Oh, that was incredible. That's probably one of my highlights of, of fall camp. You know, one thing we talked about from the very beginning whenever we got here in August was, you know, we were going to kind of use this season uh, to really look back and, uh, you know, uh, visit our first 25 years of the program. Because I believe before you can truly kind of map out uh, your, your steps to the, to the next level, you need to know where you are and you need to know how you got there and really understand that foundation. And so, you know, we really took some time and brought in some different speakers. We had – uh, Frank Morsani, who came out and spoke to the team after practice, and, you know, he was one of the chair on that, that committee. Uh, but all the research that I've done and every time I talk to, uh, talk to people about the starting the program, it always goes back to, to uh, Leroy Selman and just, you know, his passion uh, for really starting the program here. So whenever I got connected uh, with Ms. Selman and, and asked her if she would come over, really I was, I was bringing her over so we could honor her and her family uh, in, in honor of uh, Mr. Leroy Selman, and, and uh, she got up there and just gave an outstanding speech. And it was really good for our players, you know, to be able to hear a, a lot about uh, Leroy and what uh, his purpose of starting the program and being a big part of starting the program here and, and giving opportunities uh, for young men to be able to come to South Florida to play football and scholarship, to be able to earn a, a college degree and be able to go out and make an impact uh, in their community. And uh, so uh, I know uh, for myself it was incredible to watch. Our players uh, were locked in. I think it was a special moment for them as well. And uh, I think now whenever they walk in the Leroy Selman Athletic Facility, Athletic Center, uh, you know, it means a little bit more to them than maybe just a, a name on the side of the building. Coach, thanks. We're looking forward to getting this thing started. We're thrilled to be traveling with you again this year, and uh, good luck on Thursday night against NC State. Great. Thank you. We're looking forward to it. Head coach Jeff Scott, stay with us. Much more to come. Quarterback Cade Fortin later in the hour. Offensive coordinator Charlie Weiss next on the USF Football Radio Show. Welcome back to USF Football Radio Show. We have football this week. It's about time. It's Thursday night in Raleigh, North Carolina, the Bulls and North Carolina State, and then the big home opener September 11th as the Bulls host the Florida Gators. Offensive coordinator Charlie Weiss joins us. Coach, it's game one. You yes, got sir. a quarterback. We you do. got some depth. 
Yes, we do. You're in pretty good shape heading into this thing. Yeah, thanks for uh, having me on. We're we're super fired up about the group that we have. You know, like you said, we're really excited about Cade and his opportunity that he's going to have this week, and love the guys that we have behind him too. So we got always have a next man up mentality, and uh, those guys will be ready to go as well. What set Cade apart? I think just his knowledge of the offense. You know, all all of those guys are extremely talented and uh, can make all the throws that we ask them to make in this offense and. They all did that consistently. But I think Kay just has a little bit more understanding uh, of the scheme and things that we're trying to do. You know, he's obviously been here for a year. He's an older guy, a uh, veteran, and uh, he just really understands what we're trying to accomplish and can help get other people in the right spots and get us in the right checks and do some of those things. Now, Coach Weiss, you speak about the experience and the knowledge of the offense. From your experience of being around the game, is this the type of experience and knowledge that comes after being in college for as long as Kate has been? Or is this something that you feel he just has naturally for the game of football? Yeah, I think one is the experience of being in college for an extended period of time and being in systems and understanding football. But part of it is Kate's an extremely intelligent person uh, and he really can pick up things in the game and uh, very, very detailed. You know, we're going through, you know, in fall camp checking coverages and trying to identify it, and he can name it just like that and doing the same thing for our preparation with whatever opponent we play. So I think that uh, he'll do a great job with, you know, coverage recognition and understanding everything that we're trying to do. It's a little bit of both for sure. Depth was an issue really up and down the line with this team last year Absolutely. offensively. Uh, in the running back position, you had some talented guys, mm -hmm. but they, they were all kind of the same guy in right. terms of size and speed. Tell us a little bit about the stable of running backs and how you think that may play out. Yeah, I think now we kind of have three different, uh, you know, body type players, you know, with, with uh, Flex. You know, he's got a little bit more size maybe than Kelly and Bat. Uh, he can kind of do it all. He can run some power runs, but he can run the wide runs as well, can catch the ball out of the backfield. You know, I think he's a great do-it-all player. Uh, and then Jaron Mangum, you know, transfer from Colorado. He's the big back that we really needed for those short yardage goal line situations. Somebody where it's third and one, you got to take on a linebacker and finish forward. And he's been the guy that can do that. And then, you know, you got Kelly and Bat, you know, who can, uh, who have great speed and athleticism, get the ball to them on the perimeter. They can do some really good things. And, you know, they can certainly run the inside zone track and, and do that as well. But uh, they're just so dynamic and explosive. You just got to find ways to get those guys touches in space. Coach, talk about your other skill positions on offense. You got your tight ends, which is a, yep. obviously a key position on this offense. For sure. Guys that got a pass catch for you, but yep. also stand in line and be able to work in the backfield and block for these running right. backs out of single backfield motions. Yep. And then also talk about the stable of receivers that you all, I won't say have, but have developed over this yeah. offseason. I mean, Starting with the tight ends, you know, I think Brink is obviously a, a huge leader for our offense, and uh, he does a great job both run and, and, and pass. So, that, like you said, that's the key. We play in a lot of 11 personnel, you know, where that tight end's got to make some key blocks in the run game, and uh, Brink's a big physical dude who will do that, and uh, he, he's going to do some damage in the passing game as well, you know, in a variety of different ways. You know, Chris Carter's a younger guy that's really come along. He's very talented. Uh, he's going to be a really good player in the future. He's still learning the system and getting things nailed down, uh, but he's very explosive in both the run and pass game. And then uh, Gunnar Greenwald is another young player who's going to be a good one for us at tight end. And then as for the receivers, I think that's really been probably the standout of fall camp uh, is just not just, you know, one group, but we feel like we got eight or nine wideouts that we are confident in playing, and we believe all those guys can go out there and make plays. Uh, so we feel like we're two to three deep. Uh, can you know play in 11 or 10 personnel and uh, those guys are just extremely explosive but so many different types of players you know you got guys like Weaver uh, who's a who's a downfield threat can go up and make those jump ball plays a guy like Demarcus Gregory transfer from Ole Miss who's a big body guy he's gonna do a great job blocking in the run game and you know catching those slants on third down and making some big plays there you know the slot position you got Bryce who's Mr. Consistent does everything right you know, uh, Jimmy Horn, who he is going to be special. Uh, he's going to be able to run by people, make explosive plays down the field. And then, uh, you know, to the field, got Latrell, uh, OD, both explosive speed guys right there, great on the jet sweeps as well. Uh, and then you got Yusuf Terry from Baylor. Uh, Garrett Reynolds uh, is another guy who's come along and done a great job. So we just feel like we're really deep 
in that receiver room going to get a lot of production out of that position. How do you keep so many guys like that happy? I mean, the, the reality is yeah. all of these guys have dreams and aspirations that you can't accomplish sitting right. on the bench. So as an offensive coordinator, I'm sure it's a gift and a curse because you have to find a way exactly. to use all of these guys. Yeah, then the number one thing, and, and Coach Bentley, our receiver coach, does a phenomenal job with that room because that is obviously you know a real thing is that, hey, go in that meeting room, there's one ball, right? You know, there, there ain't ten balls that can go around. There's only one ball. And so, hey, some days, you know, Latrell, it's going to be your day. And some days, can, Weaver, it's going to be your day. But And then the next game, you might have one catch. You know, just that it is how it is. Uh, but that group really uh, loves each other. They play for each other. Uh, very unselfish. Uh, and obviously, we as a coaching staff, though, we've got to do a great job of game planning touches uh, for a lot of different players uh, in that room to make sure that they stay involved in the game plan because uh, those guys can make plays down the field. We just got to find different, unique ways uh, to be creative. And the reality is you're going to need all of them if for you're sure. able to play at the pace you want to play exactly. offensively. We saw a few times last year right. when you had things click and you were going at a pretty fast pace. Yes. That seems to be nothing compared to what we've seen in practice and right. some of the scrimmages. Yes, definitely. And so – you know, we want to play at a very high pace. And, you know, if we're going to play 80, 90 plays a game like our goal is, then that if you're, you know, two, three deep, then all those guys are, are going to get snaps and they're all going to play. And the good thing is everybody can stay fresh and you're getting someone's best. Whereas if you're playing 80 plays a game and somebody's playing 70 plays, you know, he's going to be tired in the fourth quarter. We want to be able to, to rotate those guys in where, hey, that starting corner, he's played 90 snaps in the game. You know, but, but our boundary receiver, you know, they're at, you know, maybe 45 each. And so they're more fresh at the end of the game when, when we need to go on a two-minute drive to win the game. The guys that don't get a lot of attention. Yep. But carry your offense, literally. Yes. Talk about your offense line and yeah. the growth that they've made and how well you all feel like you will do behind that unit this year. Yeah, I think, you know, the O-line is that group that's veteran. They've been here. You know, lots of starts in that group. You know, it starts with Brad Cecil, you know, at center, Meech at guard, Dono. Those three guys have been here for a long time. And then you got Wiggs, Trey Jacobs, and then behind them, you know, you got Hopple, Dustin Hall, Blanchard. You know, got a bunch of guys that we can rotate in. But uh, like you said, you know, early in camp maybe, you know, when, th when things aren't going well, maybe we're not clicking, throwing the ball. It's, it's just nice to have that group where we can say, all right, we're going to come out and pound it and have the ability to do that. And those guys just have the right mindset and mentality of, hey, we want to carry this thing. We want to make this thing go. Uh, and just a very intelligent group uh, who can pick up pressures. They can see things and just do a phenomenal job with all that. Um, definitely, you know, I think the strength of our offense is that group right there and that veteran leadership. And uh, it's going to show. How do you build confidence with this group? I mean, it was a challenging season last right. year, and I'm sure the players are looking at the preseason uh, projections yeah. and everything. Is it through repetition? Is it through a, a clear plan? How do you get these guys believing in themselves? Yeah, number one is don't listen to any of that. You know, that's any, that's outside influence. You know, that's not what we listen to. We look at we look in this room and in, in, in our offensive room. We show the tape, you know, from what we've done in spring ball, what we've done in fall camp, showing our guys making plays, doing things that are pretty dang impressive. And so if we can, you know, turn out the outside noise, you know, people will say what they want to say. But we go to work and do our job and take care of what we're supposed to do uh, and worry about us, then good things will happen. Uh, but we just got to, you know, build that belief by seeing the things that we've done, putting the work in. And obviously we got to do it on a game day now. You know, we've done it in practice and scrimmages and all that. But – now it's obviously a new situation on game day, but I feel like our group feels confident. I feel like they, they're prepared and ready to go. Coach, after a COVID-stricken year and all the challenges that you dealt with last year, you've had a very brief career, a short career, mm -hmm. right? You're one of the youngest coaches in college football at the coordinator level. Yes, sir. How has your appreciation for the game of football grown over the past year, all things considered? Yeah, I think. You know, last year obviously tests you, right? I mean, it's a tough season. And number one, winning and losing games, but COVID. And, you know, you're going into a game where you lose, you know, three starting linemen or what all that. But, uh, you know, if you love football and love what you do and you just care about these kids and you want the best for them, uh, just it really does, you know, make you appreciate it. Because after going through what we've gone through last year, uh, there's nothing I want more than for our group to go out there and have success. Uh, I love these guys. They've, they've worked their tail off. Uh, all off season, and uh, they love this game too. And 
uh, it's really cool to see. Uh, you know, I think they really know that what they need to do in order to accomplish their dreams, and it's been fun watching them go for it so far. Coach, thanks. Good luck on Thursday night. Absolutely. Thank you guys so much. Offensive coordinator Charlie Weiss stay with us. His quarterback is coming up next. Cade Fortin joins us when we return on the USF Football Radio Show. Welcome back. We're getting ready for the first football game of the season Thursday night. Raleigh, North Carolina, the Bulls and NC State and USF starting quarterback Cade Fortin joins us. Cade, every coach has a favorite recruiting story that he likes to tell. And I'm convinced you are Jeff Scott's favorite story at this point. Tell us from your point of view, tell us the process of how you came to USF at the 11th hour. Yes, sir. Yeah, so it was kind of crazy um, with that whole transfer recruiting process. I wanted to take it a little slower and kind of, you know, see all my options. Um, <clears throat> and then kind of getting down to the wire of right before signing day, uh, Coach Scott had got the job. Really hadn't heard much, um, like, about, like, him taking the job or anything because I was pretty focused on the schools that I was looking at. And – he uh, had called me on a Friday, like in the morning, and, um, you know, I didn't even, you know, really want to talk to him. I was kind of set on, you know, what I wanted to do, and, um, but I had some people saying, like, hey, you know, talk to him, just hear him out, um, you know, got some good people that kind of helped me, you know, make a good decision, um, and said, hey, just hear him out, you know, it can't hurt, uh, see what he has to say, don't leave any, you know, stone unturned, um, and so I heard him out, you know, just see what he had to say and you know kind of it quickly turned into you know me coming here and taking a visit um, and then ended up you know committing right before um, signing day uh, it was less than a week I think from this the first time I talked to him uh, to signing and I think really what coach Scott had that was so impressive to me was just the vision and kind of the plan that he had going forward um, and I knew the track record he had at Clemson he recruited me a little bit in high school. I think they got a pretty good guy in my class, though. Um, but, yeah, I mean, just, you know, talking to him and uh, praying about it, talking to my family, I think, you know, everything that he was uh, telling us was a good fit for me. Okay, player to player, I want to congratulate you. Thank you. Um, first of all, because of all the things that you've had to overcome to get here and start the season, start your senior year as a starting quarterback of USF, then secondly, all the things you had to do last year with COVID. But third, when I watched the film of the guys who are also in that quarterback room with you, I'm super excited to see you play because I know for a fact if they chose you that you're going to lead this team to success. But one of the key words that Charlie Weiss used to describe you was intelligent. And not a lot of ball players get that, you know, get that tag. So I'm curious to know, what has led to you having the cerebral and the mental approach that you have to this game and how, you know, again, very curious to know and how has that developed your game to this point and helped you kind of stay calm and be ready for this moment? Because it's a big moment. People aren't talking about it a lot, but you going and giving Coach Scott the confidence that he's never had and named you as the starting football player, sorry, starting quarterback going into game one, as a University of South Florida Bull. Yes, sir. Yeah, so um, appreciate it. Um, I think, you know, for me as a as a player, I think especially getting into college, um, you know, it's so competitive with the guys you're going against. Everybody's talented. Um, and I think for me, you know, um, I'm, I'm in a room, you know, where maybe guys faster than me, maybe guy has a stronger arm than me. I think kind of falling back onto um, the intelligence helps me, you know, process things a lot faster. Um, it helps me see things before they happen. I think, you know, getting in the film room, uh, watching tape, um, you know, really helps me in my game. I think it kind of goes back to, you know, when I was at North Carolina and my offensive coordinator, uh, Coach Heckendorf, I want to give a shout out to him because, you know, he really pushed me to be on top of all of, you know, coverages, whatever it may be. Um, you know, and at the time I was kind of like, you know, why is he – you know, making me do all these quarterback quizzes, all these quarterback tests and, uh, you know, things that during the off season, I was kind of like, you know, this isn't real football. Like, what am I doing? I'm just writing on a piece of paper. But I think it kind of turned into that routine of, 
you know, seeing the things happen, um, seeing them like different coverages, uh, pre-snap, post-snap uh, verification. I think uh, it really helped me, you know, move my game forward and you know be able to be confident to go out and make some of these throws, um, and uh, you know, and then taking that into each week and kind of you know seeing what they do um, forma versus different formations versus you know different down and distances, um, and I think that's kind of the cheat sheet is just you know, getting in the film room, seeing what they do, and then, you know, having it ba in the back of my head and taking notes and really understanding what they do and then applying it to our offense and kind of our, our scheme, so. And now in the sometimes small world of college football, you go right back to the state of North Carolina and you see an NC State team that you've seen before as well. Yes, sir. Yeah, I, it, it's, it's funny, you know, I, I think I've said it before. Uh, I, I told my coaches they didn't even really realize, but my last start was against North Carolina about three years ago. So, um, you know, I think that's just kind of funny. I mean, it doesn't really have any bearing on the game or anything, but um, kind of cool, you know, getting back up there in North Carolina, um, being able to play, uh, you know, the Wolfpack. I mean, they're a good team. So i um, definitely looking forward to competing with them. Okay, talk about what guy on defense, right? I'm not going to ask you about your offensive guys because those guys got to go catch balls for you and block for you. But what guy on, on defense have you been mostly impressed, impressed with, not just about what he does on the field, but the player he is and the type of teammate he is off the field as well? Yeah, definitely one guy that stands out is uh, Wayne Boyles um, for me. I mean, he's, you know, he creates chaos for us on the field for sure. Um, but then off the field, he's really stepped up, I think, as a, as a leader and being more vocal, especially on the defense. Um, and then kind of more so getting back onto our side and communicating with some of the leaders on offense, like talking about different things, you know, in the locker room, um, making sure everything's good, helping the young guys, helping them bring them along, um, kind of learn, you know, because a lot of these freshmen is a huge learning curve for them. You know, it's something they've never been around. So... Um, you know, making sure we're getting with those guys, um, teaching them, and then kind of, you know, just on, like, the practice field, being locked in, making sure guys on the sideline are uh, paying attention, getting mental reps, because you never know. You're one play away from getting in, regardless of how many reps on practice. Nobody cares. So uh, making sure you get those mental reps. And, um, you know, I think Wayne's done a great job of helping us stay locked in on that. When you guys collectively have it going, what is this offense going to look like? Yeah, I think, um, you know, we we got a really good chance to, you know, once we put it all together, um, making explosive plays in the run game and in the pass game. Uh, I think we got a lot of versatility in our backfield, um, out at receiver, um, in bo both games. I mean, we got guys that can catch the ball out of the backfield. They can run the ball. Um, I think our O-line does a great job picking up um, protections and different kinds of blitzes that they're bringing. Um, you know, Brad's been really great with all his calls and you know making sure he's on top of that and communicating with his guys uh, really solid up front um, I think we you know got a good chance to you know make it happen um, making big plays um, but then also you know we can put together those long drives that we have to you know banging out four or five yards of play um, and moving down the field and I'm just really excited to see what we can do. Kate I'm going to speak it into existence you're going to go out and have an amazing year you're gonna go out and you're just gonna knock it out of the park. But what do you most, what do you mostly want to be known for and remembered for? Um, you have a really big responsibility on your shoulders in leading this team as the quarterback. This is 25 years of USF football, and 25 years from now, what do you want people to look back, and who do you want people to remember Cave Fortin to be? Yeah, I think you know this, all this uh, goes back to just my faith, and I think you know I hope people can remember me by, you know, just how I carry myself uh, on and off the field. I hope that people can see the Lord Jesus Christ through me, um, you know, whether that's here in this interview or whether that's on social media or out on the field or just everyday life, you know, seeing me out and whatever. Um, I just hope that, you know, people can see that and remember me th as that, um, regardless of the player that, you know, that I am. I think that's more important. Um, for whatever, I mean, I think, you know, people seeing, you know, my faith and, and all that and, you know, maybe a social media post that I, I put out can help somebody, you know. Um, I, n I never know what impact that can have for somebody. 
Um, but as long as, you know, I keep doing that and make a difference in people's lives, that's, that's all I can ask for. Cade, thanks. Good luck on Thursday night. We're looking forward to seeing you play. Yes, sir. Thank you. Appreciate y'all. Cade Fortin, starting quarterback for the Bulls. He will lead the Bulls against North Carolina State in Raleigh on Thursday. Stay with us. More to come. Sam and I are back to wrap it up the first week's show here on the USF Football Radio Show. Welcome back to USF Football Radio Show. The Bulls are back in action Thursday night. Carter Finley Stadium. First visit since 2008 as the Bulls will face North Carolina State. Sam, this is not an easy opener. North Carolina State won eight games last year. They've got virtually everybody back. It's a veteran team that has a lot of talent. Yeah, you know, Jim, I go back to some of the last few games that USF played last year, and and I think it sent not only myself but many people very optimistic into the offseason. And like we said earlier in the, sh in the show, when this team is hitting on all cylinders last year at the end of the offseason, with the pieces that they had, it was a special sight to see. And I'm confident that after this entire offseason, you add these new pieces, you add a guy like Timmy McLean who can come in and give Cade Fort and a switch up. You got a slew of running backs who can get the job done. And then, like they said, you got eight or nine guys on the outside who can catch the ball and who can do something special with it. I think that North Carolina also, North Carolina State also has to be wary about what team, because they don't know what team is going to show up this Thursday night, and I'm just so excited to see Jeff Scott and his guys go out and have a great outing. And most importantly, I think for a very long time, we've been focused on what the coaches can bring to this program. But I've now, I now think that this team has the players that can go out and win a football game against an ACC opponent in, in, in North Carolina State. It all begins Thursday night. After that, two in a row at home, Florida on September 11th and Florida A&M on September 18th. Our airtime, 5.30 Thursday night from Raleigh, North Carolina. Thanks for joining us. We're back here in one week on the USF Football Radio Show.